how dark it is. I'm Karin, the vacuum tube witch. <laughs> Who else would I be? Okay. Got this pesky little bugger right here. I got the solenoid. And we'll be back to repairing the, the IBM wheel writer. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. <laughs> But uh, those things are very sturdy and it didn't get damaged. Anyway, uh, tell you about this uh, this little shim on uh, the solenoid plunger because uh, it was missing on uh, on the original. I had an option to order the original spare part uh, internationally <laughs> and it would be even uh, even if the part uh, wasn't that expensive um, the shipping uh, costs and um, and the duty that would be expensive so i went for a different option First I uh, tried to um, ask my friend Alana to make a uh, FDM, uh, you know, filament uh, 3D printer copy, but uh, didn't, that one didn't go too well. Like, I've got a, I've got a bunch of felt. Got a got a bunch of failed specimens. Uh, that doesn't look too well. It's it totally doesn't want to hold. So I went for another option. Hi Coco. I went for another option uh, at our local hacker space. That uh, we have a resin printer. And uh, any cubic, uh, and uh, some uh, some other model uh, as well. So I uh, I tried to make one uh, with the resin printer, and that might be it. Looks pretty good. So let's go to the bench and try fitting this thing. So I've got the solenoid and I've got the shim and uh, it was also a good thing that I tried to design a new one because it turned out that I got this, this uh, diameter pretty wrong. And after I uh, took the solenoid out again, yes, I uh, discombobulated the carriage mechanism again off the camera. I measured it with a uh, vernier caliper, and this time got the dimension pretty much right. And we're gonna see where it takes us. So, time to reinstall this pesky little bugger. Just like I did the last time. There's an adjustment, so I have to be super frigging careful. Not to damage the cable. There's um, there's the adjustment screw in uh, in the hammer lever, and it has to be 
set uh, in such a way that the hammer solenoid is pushed inwards. Otherwise, the solenoid ain't gonna work at all. And that's uh, that's the thing that I thought. Uh, I thought I got this one uh, right, but didn't know about it. <laughs> so. Let's try to put this thing back together and see if uh, if we get solenoid action. Doing it pretty much the way Phoenix typewriter does it. Also a good source of knowledge on IBM and uh, and other typewriters. I learned uh, tons of stuff about uh, the Selectric. But for the electric, it's uh, it's the surface manual manual that's gonna be my guide now. And if you take a closer look at the back of the solenoid, you'll notice you'll notice that this part is uh, sticking out. I can still move it out by a fraction of a millimeter. And if I push it inwards, you'll see that the hammer actually does its job. So, reassembly time again! And, like before, then the route behind I have to turn it to lock it in place.
And then putting the the belt on uh, the tensioner. And let's try to test this magnificent machine. Interesting. Still no action. <laughs> I know why there is no action. There is no action because there is no connection. No action, no connection, no connection, no action. Oh yeah, this is polarized. Clicked in place and let's try again. And we have strike action. Look at that, thing of beauty is right forever. Okay, so we're getting closer to the point of testing the machine with a proper paper and the ribbon.
still not writing. Looks like, looks like the cassette has to go down uh, slightly more. I wonder. It's this motor that makes it possible, that lowers it, but gotta take a look at uh, what happens when I turn this on. This motor, this motor works, but this is going up and I guess that by default the operation mode uh, is, is printing and not uh, erasing. I could see some uh, jerky movement on, uh, on the wheel. But uh, if I try to lower it by hand, I think I lowered it too much. The strike force is very weak. I can see some characters being being struck, uh, test and and some more characters that I typed. It looks like the the ribbon itself. Uh, it might uh, not work at all. And by the way, my little hack with uh, removing the internationalization worked. If I uh, press the if I press uh, the key that uh, normally is Y, but on this keyboard is Z, I get the Y character. So any issue with with the typewriter? It's still in uh, the ribbon itself. Oh, that's a, that's interesting. Because when I strike any key, then uh, the ribbon is uh, lifted. So my adventure with uh, the Wii Writer continues. There will be some figuring out what I still need to do to make it print.
Restarting. The drive mechanism for the cassette works both ways. I could see it lifted and lowered. But I guess that uh, the height at which it is lowered is not correct. By the way, we've got two splines with corresponded uh, cogs in, uh, in those mechanisms. And that's what drives uh, the typing and correcting ribbon. Then the typing ribbon sometimes unfurls and I guess uh, gets smashed. <laughs> but for the tests I will keep it. So that would be the short one the short second part the third part is gonna be final tests i need to get this thing to type and to print i will put it back together but first i need to do some research on why it doesn't print any characters so in the meantime, I'll take some more time with the Wii Writer, but for the moment we have Solenoid action, we have Hammer action. That thing is good. Time for more. Stay determined and carry on. <laughs>